Hi friends. Well, I've been inspired by this lovely nature journal I bought from Dottie Delightful on Etsy. I'll link to her channel down below. She's got uh, she's got a YouTube channel and it's inspired me that I'm going to make myself another... I can't write in it. <laughs> meant to write in it, but I love it so much as it is. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm going to make my own journal using this paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a sheet. Now, I thought I'd show you this because this is the paper I like to use. Oh, I love it. It's cartridge paper. It's heavyweight, which is £135, 220 GSM. And it's a good size. And I'm going to do some folding. I'm going to turn it into a concertina style journal that I can record my findings. My I'm going to call it my spring nature journal because at this time of year, there's a lot of changes that happen in the countryside. So I'm going to be recording it in this. I'm going to do some painting with acrylic paint. I was going to tape down the paper to prevent warping and buckling, but I'm going to live with buckles because I want to use all of the paper. I don't want to lose the taped off edges. So I've got out some pencils. I've got some watercolor pencils and I've got my Stabilo uh, all out. I've got some Conte crayons. I probably only use the black, actually. I might use the brown. We'll see. And so basically, I'm going to get some colour. I'm going to make some marks first, actually. Let's make some marks. I want to make a very abstract look. It's going to be easy and open and free. And then, oh, I like that using the side. And then when I fold up the papers, it's going to be different. Let's make some interesting marks with this Stabilo Woody. I had retired my stabulos, but I found this in my pencil pot, so I thought I'll go for that. So as I apply the paint, some of these will smudge, which I quite like. So in fact, they probably all will smudge. Oh, yes, I love doing this at the moment. This is nice and free and fun. Hopefully there will be some of these marks still remaining. Okay. What else? The Conte crayon. Actually, I might apply that a bit later on. So I've got a plastic palette out. I've got, I'm going to use a lot of water because I'm going to do like washes. So it really is going to buckle. I'm going to use blues. I want to use a cool, cool yellow. Whoops, because that, that says spring to me. I might use a bit of green, but not too much. I think that's going to be I'm going to start with those. I might come in with some brighter colours later, but I need to leave myself scope for working on the pages and not get in too bold. At this stage, I'm running out of space. Right. Let's start with the light blue. I'm going to add a lot of water to that. And I'm using a Harke brush, a large one. I usually use these for watercolours, but this one I use for all sorts. I did consider doing watercolours on this, but I, I'm... I think I'll go with this so I can work on top once this is done. Right, very watery, so <laughs> watch the paper buckle, but hey-ho, we'll live with it. So just going to get some colour down. Oh, I love the smudging I'm getting there. That's great. Maybe a bit more water. Lovely. Lovely smudging. This is Dela Rowney, the Wedgwood colour. I live in Wedgwood country, so <laughs> I've always liked that colour anyway. So I'm going to go over to the edges as well. I mustn't, I mustn't miss out the edges. Oh, loving that already. So now I'm going to come in with a bit of the yellow. Now, I really wanted a cool yellow because that really is daffodil colour, isn't it? Sorry about the noise there. And daffodils really are spring. I might even get a bit of raw, um, what's this, raw sienna? Yeah, gonna, I, I might come in with a bit of that as well. So nice natural colours and nice spring colours. There's a little bit of blue accidentally mixing in with this, but we shall live with that because we'll get a nice green. And the green and yellow. In fact, it gets appointed by the end of spring. I was like, I've seen enough yellow. I want to see some other colours now. Okay, so this is messy. I'm running out of space. This is messy and that's great, absolutely great at this stage. Went on a lovely walk yesterday. <laughs> Decided to explore a bit, a bit of the forest that's very near me actually, but it's not somewhere where I've walked because I didn't know there was an official walk there. And, uh, I was a bit afraid of getting lost. <laughs> But anyway, I found my way. It was OK. Yes, there were signs of spring. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do this now. Otherwise, I'm going to miss the opportunity. OK, we're going to have to put that there. All right, we'll have a little bit of the raw sienna. 
I do like raw sienna. It's a lovely colour. Oh, come on. It's a nice and natural colour. Spring is my favourite time of year. Well, I like all oh I like all seasons, let's face it. They've all got their own merits, haven't they? Okay, we now have some palette marks happening there. <laughs> let's find somewhere to put that's gonna have to go on the floor. <laughs> out so now we've got some color covering every inch of the paper that's great and now I can come in okay with those funny marks come in and do some more mark making and I'm going to do it while it's wet because why not let's come in with the Conte what I want to make is some bold some really bold vertical marks because where I am there's a lot of trees, obviously I've just talked about the forest and although I don't naturally uh, want to represent those all the time, you know, completely it'll be nice to have bits that remind me of them here and there mostly they are pines just going to do some the marks. Now I'm going to come in with some bright orange, make some marks with that. Lovely. These woodies are great. I got fed up with them at one point. Oh, in fact, I quite like that going across these. I did get fed up with them at one point. I stopped using them for a while, but hmm, I think I'm going to have to get them back out again. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes do that with some art supplies. I think, oh, I've had enough of this. <laughs> okay, so this is looking lovely and messy. I want some more brighter colours now. So I'm going to dry this off and then I'll be back with some more mark making. I'm, going, I'm not to go too dark. Remind me, tell me. Carrie, you're going too dark if I go too dark. Okay, so that's dried off. It's still is slightly damp and it's not warped too badly, so I'm quite pleased about that. I'm going to come in now with some brighter colours and just going to make some marks here and there. Nothing spectacular, just creating a little bit of an interest here and there. And this time I'm using smaller brushes. This is magenta mixed with white. It's a bit of a favourite colour that I'm using a lot on the gel plate at the moment and I'm working in various places because I don't have to think about a composition oh I want some orange on this right some orange is coming as well <laughs> just suddenly have the urge to put some more orange on and I know I've got the orange pencil marks but yes this is calling me I do want some more blue as well. I've got my Tharlo mixed with white there too. That's nice. Okay. It's going to be interesting to see how each page looks when I start turning it into a concertina journal. Just be brave and have fun with your mark making. I'm just going to create some interesting lines. I don't mind if they create a different colour here and there. See how they end up. So this is looking quite crazy, but that's okay. Interesting shapes there. I don't get to double that. Right, I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to get onto the folding bit and I'll show you how I'm going to fold it. I'm just going to add some white areas just here and there. Perhaps for writing on, because that's a difficult part. If you do too much painting, there's nowhere to write. Oh, I've covered up all this lovely pink marks. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm going to go around these blue, blue marks. Add some more pink when I do the nature stuff, maybe. 
Now I like what's happening there. Let's go around this. Okay. So it's going to be loose and free. I'm going to do some splatters actually. You know what I like? I like a few splatters. Let's go in there like that. Right up to the edge. Okay. That's a good. I'm going to do some a little bit around here. So at this point, I'm not drawing anything particular. I can do that later when I start recording things. I can do little drawings as well as writing. Okay, I think there's that. Now I'm going to do some splatter. I'm going to do that off screen because I need to keep it away from the camera. So I'll be back in a second with some splatter, hopefully. <laughs> okay, here it is. Looks great, lovely splatters, which I think are mostly dry. I'm going to now fold it into thirds this way, but I need to measure it out. I'm going to do that on the back. The trouble with A2, you know, A sizes here in the UK, well, all of Europe, is it's a so-and-so to measure. So 42 centimetres, that's 14, isn't it? 14. Yeah, 14, okay. So, 14 and 28. If, if, I'm a, if I'm too big on one end, I'm just gonna trim it. Because <laughs> it's not exact. 14, I used to be able to eyeball that sort of thing, but the eyes aren't as good these days. 28, now I need a long ruler. Do I have one up here? Okay, can't find my long ruler, so I'm gonna use a stretcher bar. Okay, so now I've got to fold along these lines. <laughs> I'll do it this way, maybe, so I can see them. Oh, I can't do it. Okay, try. Let's start at that end. I'm gonna have to get the bone folder. Let's try and do it straight. I don't want it to be misaligned. It's obviously not the direction the paper wants to fold. Paper has a grain. Hopefully that looks straight. Now this will be easier, hopefully. This is uh, quite stiff. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it to the middle and then I'm going to trim off the excess on the other side and just hit the camera. Then I'm I'm going to fold it to the middle here and then I'm going to trim off the excess from the other end. I'll show you that in a moment, but my hands are full. Actually, it's pretty close. Oh, it's close enough. Ooh, quite like that. Okay. Yeah, actually I don't need to trim anything. There we go. Right. So that's folded that way. It doesn't have to be zigzag, I just did that for ease of folding. And then I'm going to fold it quarters this way. I should end up with some squarish pages. We'll see. We will see. I haven't done this for ages. So the memory isn't so good. Okay, one fold that way and I'm just going to press it gently with the bone folder. And then, Sticking still slightly damp. I'm going to come into the center. Then this side into the center. Sorry if this is a bit slow. You can always speed through this if you know how to do this. But if you're curious, Keep watching. Okay, so now I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut along this line. Sorry, I'm off shot here. <laughs> I'm going to cut along this line up to that point there. I'm trying to cut straight, but you know, it's not happening. <laughs> 
So I fold to, I, I cut to the fold line here. Are you excited for spring? And I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to cut along here to the fold line there. I just love it. It's, it's a season that seems to happen so quickly. It seems to take ages to start. And then once it starts, it's whoosh, very fast. Cut along there to that line. And now I can start making the concertina. Okay, so now we have to do the folding. So it's the zigzag fold that way that way then under then that way that way that way and under <laughs> that way that way that way and here we have here we are love that page there and now, but well, I just need a cover now and a tie. So I can incorporate the tie and the cover together. Just using the bone folder to press it all down. But the pages are more or less square, which is lovely. I like that page. This will be fun to work on. I can even use both pages like that. Anyway, right, let's think about the cover. So I've got some gel prints of some dry grasses that I did and this gel print of some plant shapes that I drew and stenciled. So that'll go on the back and that'll go on the front. I'm not going to put a tie, I'm going to do just a simple wrap. So I'm just going to use some simple PVA glue, a sponge spreader, spread it out with a sponge. The hard part's going to be lining it up. <laughs> Make sure I've got it up right the right way. There. What I can do is I can overnight put it under some heavy books to make sure it goes a bit flatter. Now, now the back. Great to have a stash of gel prints to call on at any given time. So I might incorporate some into the pages when I'm working in it. Let me know if you'd like me to show you the pictures of me working in it. I don't know whether they'll be any good. Right. Double check. I've got it the right way around. Yep. <laughs> you know, getting it upside down will be a bit annoying at this stage. Lovely. And that's the back. So here it is. It's going to be fun to work in. You, could, you don't have to paint, you could do stamps, you could do jelly prints, you could do whatever. What I might do actually is glue these, these two pages together. Yeah, I'm going to do that now. You don't have to do that, it's just that I'm being fussy. <laughs> I've got the glue out, might as well. Got a wet sponge, let's go for it. But I'll show you what it looks like now anyway. No, I haven't got too much. Okay. these to lay flat. Let's press it down firmly. Okay, I should do the trick there. That's that one. And now this one. I just prefer that look. It's a bit flopping about. So I'll just get some glue on there. This is just PVA glue by the way. You could also use scrapbooking pages if you don't want to do the painting for something that you can write on or stamp on or draw on. You could also just do plain watercolour pages. I did consider that. So I could just do watercolours. So I might do that additionally, actually. Press 
putting these firmly together. I don't want any glue to seep out and glue onto the other pages. Okay. So, this is what the book looks like stood up like that. So, it's a simple, it's just such a simple way of making a little journal. And it'll be perfect for spring. I can do some writing on the front, which I think I will. I'll cut, get the typewriter out and maybe do a spring journal here. But there we go, I'm ready to start using the pages now. Every time I see something. I'm going to trim that off and tidy that up. Here we are, I've just made the tag. Just out of some scrap paper. And there it is. Uh, I might glue that on, I'm not sure. Whether to hang it from this. Should be quite nice, wouldn't it? Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. My fingers are all gluey. There we go. There. Love it. That was a fun, simple project. Yes, I'm going to leave that overnight under some heavy things, but it seems to be laying fairly flat anyway, so I'm quite happy with that. So let me know if you make a nature journal. Uh, it's a very easy method. You could probably do a neater job of it than I have. <laughs> but anyway, lots of fun. I'll um, see you next week. Bye.